world! If you've read TechCrunch lately, you've probably seen the out-of-this-world news that Octopost has raised $20 million in growth funding with Expedition Growth Capital. As you can imagine, it's certainly an exciting time for Octoposters, and here to dish about it all with me today are Octopost co-founders, CEO Daniel Kushner, and VP product, Liad Guez. Daniel, Liad, welcome to the show. Are you ready to get hey, radically man. transparent with me? <laughs> Hell yeah. <Wow. laughs> it's great to have you guys. I know for our uh, subscribers and our, our listeners and our followers, uh, we met you, Daniel, a few months back, but it's really great to have you both uh, on the show. It's been a while. Um, so listen, I want to start off, oh, maybe it's an easy one, but I want to start off before we talk anything Octopost. Maybe you could just tell us a little bit about how you met. Wait, so what, b before I give my version of how we met, because I'm sure that Liad <laughs> has a different version. I just want to say, Jen, kudos on this, uh, on the podcast, Rad Radically Transparent. This is a lifesaver for my Thursday traffic. <laughs> the first thing I do, I get in the car, I have like one and a half, two hours traffic ahead of me. And the first thing I do, I wait for Thursday to tune into the podcast. And it, it's really insightful. So thank you for doing it. Absolutely. And as many of us get back thank on the road as offices reopen, I hope uh, everybody will, this will make their commute more enjoyable. All right, Liad, let's kick so, off. So How do you know? Oh, you want you to start? Go, go ahead, Liad. <laughs> we, we always have different versions, but uh, you know, the, the way I remember is that Daniel cold called me for uh, a, a web design development project that he has. So we found, found my agency back back in the day and found it on the web and just picked up the phone and, and told me about a project that he wanted to build. And we set up a meet and, and you know, long story short, you know, we're, we're, what, 12 years after, Daniel? This, so, so I, honestly, I, kind of, I have like three potentials potential ways that we met, right? One was when yeah. I was at Cineron and I had something, or I right. had, I was like between Cineron and Olio that I had something and I was looking for development, or it was at Nolio when I needed that extension to the, to the marketing team. And I can't remember which one it was. Well, the way I remember it is that we started to work together on Nolio. So when you had that project on in audio that you needed help from kind of outside web agency, that's when we start to work. But we met a little bit before that. I think maybe when you were in Cineron or between audio and Cineron. So that, that's in any case, initial meeting. And our, our first 10 to 20 initial meetings were always at coffee shops. So that's, that's yeah. interesting. Now, What's interesting to me, so so you've met, it's it's unknown right now, the official moment that you met, but you had worked a little bit together, maybe in the past on some projects, no formal friendship, relationship. And then here's Octopost. Can you dive into a little bit then, like how did you birth Octopost? Yeah, well, yeah, so, so, so we, we worked together on, 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 on projects. I used, Leah had, had a web development agency. I used his uh, services. Uh, a fun fact is that the, the first, first time I spoke to Liad and we were working on like this engagement, not Octopod, like the, the previous engagement, he said very clearly, I do not answer phones or respond to emails after 4 p.m. And I was like, <laughs> uh -huh. okay. We'll, we'll put that one aside because you know me, Jim. It's like 24 seconds. A little exaggeration there. All right. So, uh, five p.m. <laughs> All right. Uh, but, but it is. So, so, you know, we, Liad, Liad and I work together. And, you know, a part of, you know, building a, a, a measurable marketing team is, is all about the, the numbers and understanding where the leads are coming from, where they're going to, understanding influence, opportunity pipeline, et cetera. And you know, we, we were using, you know, back at the, the Nolio days, a, a ton of social media for, for awareness and lead generation. Uh, you know, we, we were in the early days of Pardot, when Pardot was Pardot, not a part of Exact Target, not a part of Salesforce, uh, you know, before all their, their uh, acquisitions. 
And we, we knew that social was working, but we couldn't measure it. And, you know, Buffer was just coming out and Hootsuite was like the biggest player. They had like, they passed a million, million users uh, back in the day. Uh, but th there was nothing to measure. And that's when we started to have discussions, Liad and I, about, you know, look at this, B2B organizations, they're also using social. It's not just the, the college students and the, and the B2C brands, but also B2B. And we, we're getting leads. We know that we're getting leads, but we can't prove anything. So the discussions really started to happen, uh, I would say, even a, a year or two before we, we started working on Octopus. So what was that like? Yeah. You just like, hey, uh, hey, Liad, you want to build Octopus? I mean, do you remember that discussion or like that moment? Yeah, yeah the, the ones that didn't have a name for it back then. So Daniel spoke with me about an idea and we, we talked about it a few times and um, you know, he had a few conversations with, with friends and, and potential and, and colleagues about about this and always he, he always came to me with, with additional validation points and saying, you know, this marketer or this company, they're also saying it's, it's something that's missing. So Daniel did all the initial work in terms of kind of evolving the idea and then getting the, that initial validation. And I remember a few months after in, into that uh, idea, ideating process and validation, you know, I, I called him up. I wasn't ready back then to, to start engaging and doing something like this, but I knew that I wanted to, to do something because I was running a web agency for a while. A service-based uh, business takes its toll and I wanted to transition into something, um, you know, building a product. That, uh, that's, that, that, that's something that I wanted to do and that, that I felt like I was good at. And um, want to fill the, to find the right partner to do it with. And after a few, you know, two years of working with Daniel, approximately in audio, and having these conversations about this idea and getting all these validation points, you know, I remember one day calling you, like, said, okay, that's that's the point where, where we should talk. I called him up. I said, hey, Daniel, you, you remember that idea that um, you spoke with me about? Are you still into it? Was it before 4 p.m.? It was, I remember, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right around afternoon. Okay. Right around afternoon, I called him up and said, hey, this is, you're still interested? Is, is it something that you're, you're willing to do? Um, and he said, yeah. And so then we should probably meet. And then, you know, like we started working on this engagement and then uh, started to build Octopus, the initial version. That's, that's fantastic. Now, listen, I want to talk for a moment because all the buzz right now, when people hear the word octopus, besides B2B social media management, I think the, the next thing they're being wowed by is money. And I'll, I'll dive into that in, in a sec, right? So, and I want to talk about the money because let's face it, right? There's nothing more radically transparent in business than when you're actually talking about the dollar signs. So, is it true? So this was, this must have been what back in 2011, 12 or 2013, you can keep me honest, but is it true that back then you only registered an 800,000 in early stage funding and and that's it up until today? Yeah, yeah. So so one you know we we developed the the initial kind of version 0 0.1 alpha uh octopus in during 2013. Okay. Uh, and then you know we we, we got maybe a, a few customers who were like like we had like four two three four thousand dollars on you know monthly recurring yeah. revenue uh back then and and we really saw the product market fit so we wanted to to boost our efforts and to start to employ you know additional people because basically it was just me and we had doing a to z you know everything from development operations design website customer service cs account selling everything uh, then that needs to be done. Uh, so we, we did look for a, an amount. We didn't look for a large amount because, you know, if, if this was our dream, and again, you know, being radically transparent, you know, our, our dream was to bootstrap all the way. Uh, we, we believe that, that bootstrap companies, they have a very uh, different and unique uh, DNA, uh, you know, much closer to the customer, much closer to the, to the employees. Uh, but we did want to get that 
small boost in, in the beginning. So, so we raised 800K uh, from amazing uh, angel investors, uh, to be angels and, and plus ventures to, to put the name out there, the, the, the guys that, that believed in us. And, that, and that's it until the, the, the recent announcement, we, we you know, basically grew at a very healthy 40 plus percent year over year uh, from that initial 800K. So what, what was the trigger, right? Like fast forward to today, the news went out rather recently that uh, you know, we have a new round of funding. What, what changed? So one, while we, we I'll talk to me personally, super enjoyed the, 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 the journey and, and, and being bootstrapped, it's all a matter of timing, right? And, and yeah, it's like time and luck, I would say the two biggest factors in any business. Uh, and, and for us, the, the, the COVID and with all the, 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 the shit that happened around the world during the pandemic for online and for social, it, it had a very positive impact. And we saw a good growth uh, during 2020, in, in the continued good growth in uh, 2021, uh, amazing validation uh, with our competing friends in the market. So Sprout Social went public, which is great. And Sprinkler, they just recently went public. So there's so much energy and, and awareness around social media management in general and being super unique in the B2B uh, space. For us, it was all about timing. We had this opportunity uh, to meet with Expedition Growth Capital uh, in the UK, uh, and not only you know are they do they seem like a good uh, financial group, their, their their insights to the business and insights to the market uh, for us was very eye opening. So so we we not only do we see this as a as a raise, but also partnering uh, with, with a group that can definitely help us grow into the future. Leah, do you agree with that? Is that how you feel as well? I I, I couldn't have uh, put it better. <laughs> All right. So then I'm going to, well, I think that's, you know, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so Leah, I'm shifting over to you because I've been dying to ask this for years, right? There's this story that Octopost, as many startups are, right? Octopost was founded in a garage. And I want to talk a little bit about that evolution because I know our office is no longer a garage. Uh, but could you talk about, you know, it, it was a garage and, and what has the evolution of Octopus life at the office and Octopus offices? What, what does that look like today? Are you still in the garage? <laughs> Maybe in COVID. Yeah. So, so one interesting fact, most Israeli houses, so one we were founded in Israel, most Israeli houses don't have garages or have small apartments. And um, where we're situated here, Right next to Tel Aviv in a city called Ramat Gan. And um, our first office was actually my home office. Okay. Uh, right next to Tel Aviv. So when, when like my wife, she, she went to design college and we moved together a few years ago, right in front of that college in a small apartment two bedroom apartment, one room for us and another room for my office. This is where I ran my, my web agency from. I had a couple of employees. And when we started Octopost, we had a transition period where we didn't have an official office. We didn't find an, an office back then, but we started, we, we got the funding and we needed to find an office and we needed to hire people in addition. So we started all the hiring and working from my home office. So uh, there was a situation where we were getting to three, four, five people in a small three bedroom apartment right next to Tel Aviv, working from this very, very tiny room, serving as my, my uh, personal home office. Now, is that in Israel, is that like a cult? Like, I don't know, I feel in other parts of the world, if you're trying to hire, you're like, hey, yeah, come have an interview in my office at my <laughs> house. I mean, did people take you seriously back then? Is that a cultural thing that it's like normal or they knew it was startup? Was it hard to recruit? I, I, I can, I don't know about normal because I've never been in a job interview before. Um, but I, let's just say that after a couple of interviews, we, we, we understood the vibe and started inviting people to, to have that interview in a coffee shop right downstairs. Got it, got it. And now today I know that, you know, there's offices in, in Tel Aviv still, uh, or near Tel Aviv. 
um, Atlanta, uh, London. So could did I did I get I get them all? And then kind of at what stage since 2013 did you start expanding into other um, regions? Wait, well, one that's the wrong question. The all question right, correct. Is what, 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 why, why did we leave Liad's apartment? <laughs> that, that, I hear the coffee the was great. <laughs> The, the coffee was great. The atmosphere was amazing. You had all the facilities there. Uh, the one day his wife came home, more like like five people <laughs> hustling. the. And it's 24 seven, right? Like it wasn't like a nine to five kind of, hey, uh, no, it, in my house. It, it, it wasn't nine to five. <laughs> Liad forgot those days when he signed off at 4 p.m. <laughs> but some, you know, one of the, the guys that we had he just he was in the restroom he did what he did you know what people do in the restroom he came out and then he saw Ra- rachel the liad's wife and he like looked at her and said who are you <laughs> and and she was in her own house and then i think then liad got like a 24 hour notice that he needs to vacate the apartment so and you guys were evicted <laughs> evicted yeah. yeah yeah we got evicted so yeah. you got evicted. And that's when we found the, the, the great office uh, at the back of the bakery. Where, where, when, when you started. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> the smell of success. The smell was delicious. Yeah, yeah but yeah, we, we, we finally grew to 40, around 40 employees. The office is uh, here in uh, Tel Aviv, Ramat Gan. Uh, office in Atlanta, in the Nantichek village, and in London. Amazing. Now listen a little bit of a curveball to get radically transparent when it comes to recruitment, but I know there's kind of a hot debate right now, especially when it's growing marketing, but in general, and I guess COVID might've changed a lot of this, but as you were building out Octopost, at what point did you say to yourselves, Hey, I think we need boots on the ground in London, or Hey, I think we need boots on the ground in the U S. Yeah. So, you know, I think that, when you look at talent and, and local talent or global talent, it's no secret. It's getting the, the sort shortage is, is increasing uh, around the world. Now, at being a, a global or, or setting globally the, the Octopus solution, you need native English speakers, right? That's like the minimum, right? If you're going to Europe or because they have, you know, more more local natives, but at the minimum native English speakers. And at the talent pool in Israel, we've got amazing native English speakers and Anglo-Saxons in Israel, but it's a very limited pool. And you you start when you're interviewing customer success managers and and, and account executives, you start to see this recycle of the same names, right? Because you've just got like there's so many people in this small country that are just doing sales and they go from one company to the other. And then they cycle back. Uh, so for us, it, it was it just made sense, right? Anything which is customer facing, you need to have either in US or in the in the UK to serve Europe. Mm-hmm. So that that was kind of the, the 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 trigger to start moving everything which is customer facing out to those uh, locations. And you know, besides increasing the the town pool magnitudes, because look at the number of people in the US compared to, to, to Israel, uh, you're also solving time zone issues and availability and, and everything around that. Absolutely, absolutely. And then just to confirm, right, this, you know, we're, we're hiring, right? This might be a good time to throw that in there. So if you're yeah, based careers. in Israel, careers.octopost.com. Careers.octopost.com. If you like what you hear and you're looking for a new awesome place to work, uh, friendly plug. But I want to actually transition. I want to put a different hat on right now. I want to talk about swimming upstream, right? It's a super well-known phrase in startup, in our industry, and we hear it a lot, right? For those listening who might not be as familiar with it, it's basically what it sounds, right? When you swim upstream, you tend to hit a lot of obstacles. You have a lot of odds against you. Um, And in the startup world, it seems that you're oftentimes swimming upstream. And I'm just curious from your point of view, right? It can also keep you pretty strong, always, you know, swimming up that stream and hitting those obstacles. But how do you feel learning how to swim upstream has impacted the company or impacted Octoposters? Yeah, so you know, I think it, it would 
you know, what, one, when we look at, of, at startups from the outside in, everything seems very uh, bright and dandy and pink, and you all see the, the Cinderella stories in the, in, in, in the papers. Uh, but whenever you drill down or see from the inside, uh, it's one very much chaotic ups and downs on a, on a daily and, and weekly basis. Right? You know, even lots of that is, is, is help from employees, right? And only maybe the top management or, you know, the founders, they, they, they see uh, the, the mood swings of the market and of the investors and of employees, etc. cetera. So it, it's, not, it's not necessarily a constant upstream. It's, it's you know, I think roller coaster is more of a, kind of the, 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 the mindset or you know what what's happening on the, on the ground uh, within startups but there, there was an interesting post I think that our friend uh, Jonathan Sneer I saw that he shared on LinkedIn uh, last week uh, about bouncing back uh, I think I reshared it or commented on it because it was like super uh, you know you know for, for me it's true it's that you know one on one second you have a customer or a major customer churning and two minutes later, you're on a, a prospect call. And you know, one, one minute you are interviewing someone and the next minute you have an employee leaving. And it, it's, it's this constant getting used to, uh, you know, what, what was in this article or in this LinkedIn post about bouncing back and, 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 and managing that. So when something negative happens and negative things are gonna happen all the time, it's not sticking to that negativity. It's okay, understand that's a situation now let's move on and see how we can increase. Absolutely. And I think what's interesting to you brought up, right? You know, it's more of a roller coaster maybe than swimming upstream. And you shared, right? Everybody on the outside is always seeing, you know, they're seeing in tech runs, wow, Octopus raised a 20 million, or they're seeing great things coming out of all of these organizations around us. Um, but I think a lot of times people only tend to see the iceberg when it comes to the success, right? They're not seeing what's going on beneath it. Um, and I'm curious to know both Leah, Daniel, open it up because I think sharing failures, right? <laughs> Embracing failure and sharing it, maybe anyone listening, you know, it, it's helpful, but I, I'm, I'm wondering, right, if, if you've had any great failures, if you will, um, along the way that, in, that maybe in the moment you were panicking or sweating and, and really worried that, oh, I, I blew it. And then you know, in hindsight, right? Hindsight is twenty twenty. Looking back, that actually it wasn't a failure at all, and it has helped you get where you are today. Yeah. So I think that there's one that I can think of. It's not. It's like a market change that that you know, on the surface is super negative, and uh, and you're also a part of this story. <laughs> I think it was like two thousand fourteen or fifteen when when there was a a huge API change on, on LinkedIn and they decided that LinkedIn groups wasn't something that they want to invest in and want to have people pragmatically posting content into, uh, you know, and for us, you know, being the, uh, the B2B solution, LinkedIn groups was, you know, part of a strategy for, for, for many businesses. And there was a, it was a good lead gen uh, channel and they were getting lots of value out of that by providing, you know, content that, that's valuable to the readers. But you know, it is what it is. You get a few months notice. This and this is is going away. It's going to be moving, and the the, the first thing is, oh shit! Like, what what are we going to do now? This is why people are using Octopost, or you know, part of the reason why people are using Octopost. But when we, you know, took some time to think about it, like, why are people using LinkedIn groups? Uh, we we boiled it down to it's about amplification, about getting your, your content and your message and your thought leadership out to people who aren't necessarily fo following your LinkedIn company page, your Twitter accounts, Facebook company page, et cetera. And, and you know, besides having huge churn during that, 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 that period, I'm embarrassed to say the numbers, but you know, <laughs> we, we're past that. Uh, that was the, the birth of advocacy. Right, Not which only is basically... did you birth Octopus in 2013, <laughs> but like two years later, you uh, birthed Octopost employee advocacy baked yeah. right on in. I mean, this is pretty it's, mind blowing. It, it's mind blowing, but again, where advocacy again, it's the same concept. You're using external resources to amplify your content on social media, right? So, and and you know, for us, advocacy it did wonders 
uh, for Otter Post. It did wonders for the customers that are using ad advocacy and are able to, to amplify their, their awareness on social and position their employees as, as thought leaders in the industry. So I think, yeah, it's a great example, something which is super negative. Uh, we, we had, again, huge uh, churn in a, in a two, three month uh, period. But on the long run, this was something which is, uh, it, it, it was amazing for Octopus customers and Octopus as well. Agreed. And Liad, can you share some lemonade that you've made from some of your startup <laughs> lemons? I think, I think the advocacy story is it's a great story, right? Because we had this, well, be completely honest, we knew a couple of months before that, that LinkedIn are planning to, to remove this API. And, and, and we needed to prepare for it. And we had all these uh, different assumptions about what's going to happen and how it's going to be rolled out. Because, uh, and um, when we understood that it's going to be removed, and, and uh, at some point, we also understood that it's going to be kind of gradually removed and octopus are going to be one of the first one, ones that are, aren't going to have it. Um, you know, the, the, the bounce back or, or our solution for um, what, what, what the advocacy part. So that, 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 that was a, a very, very good story. But I think we, we fail at things every day. You know, we do a lot of things. We, we have a lot of, we're, we're, we're kind of juggling a lot of balls. Again, even with a 40 people startup, there are a lot of different roles that aren't being completely filled or a lot of different functions that aren't fully addressed by, by having you know, dedicated people doing them. Uh, so we're, we're wearing a lot of hats, different hats, throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the months. And, and, and even if we have a defined role, you know, so this product, this is, you know, sales. So we're, we're still doing very versatile and doing a lot of different things. And, you know, when you're juggling, sometimes the, the things fall, fall between the cracks. But I think it's, it's a learning experience and an amazing journey. So can't kind of recall on something that were made to lemonades, but uh, a failure that we switched. But uh, I think that the advocacy story is a great story. So I like what you said. It's about the journey. I once read a quote, I think, and it was a lot of times people pay attention to when someone's born and when someone dies, right? Even on their tombstone, it's written when they're born and when they've died. And there's like this little dash in between those numbers, but actually the life or the journey, right? That dash is the most important part of that person's life. That's what makes the person who they are. And I would argue that it sounds like it's very similar at Octopost, right? You may have been founded in 2013. We're still ongoing, great things are happening, but really that little dash that's defining, you know, when we are running and operating, that's the journey, right? That's the excitement, that's the story, and that's where we're learning. For the sake of time, and I know everyone's, you know, if you're commuting, and hopefully your commute is only 30 minutes, um, but I, I have two questions left. Um, the, the one I have, you know, here is uh, what's next for Octopus with this new, new round of funding, new investors, I think there's new board members, new employees, I mean, a lot of new things. What's next? Grow, grow, grow. That, that, that's, our, that's our goal. You know, we've been growing you know, super successfully up to now. And this is, you know, for us, it, it, it's to put additional fuel and oxygen onto the fire. So in a, look at every single corner of Octopost. It's going to be growing. Fantastic. I'm excited for it. So the last question, and this is what everybody waits for. So I'm really excited for this one. Um, so usually if you listen into the show, you know that the last question is we ask if the guests can tell us something about themselves that you can't find out from their LinkedIn profile, right? All these executives on LinkedIn, everybody has their professional persona. And I was going to ask you guys that today, but then I started thinking, you know, hey, let's change things up a bit. While I have you both on the show, what I want to ask you, Daniel, can you share something about Liad that is not on his LinkedIn profile. And Leon, I want the same from you. Can you share with us something today that we don't know about Daniel and it's not on his LinkedIn profile 
that only you know that you can share with us today. Ready? Go. Good. The ad. <laughs> so here's like two jobs that you would never imagine. Uh, so you Currently? know that. You, no, not. Cu- I hope not. <laughs> Previously, right? One is is a. Uh, I don't know if it's on your LinkedIn, Liad. An underwater <laughs> photographer. Yeah. Okay. Is right? that on your that, LinkedIn, that's Liad? One. Yeah, that's true. It, it's on your LinkedIn? No, not on no, my LinkedIn, okay. but it, it's true. And the other one, which is like more like wild from what he does today, he was uh, a house painter. He used to paint houses. Yeah. Really? Yeah, a small, small business entrepreneurship before before I was 18 so like everybody summer, starts somewhere so from painting houses to underwater photography web development and now co-founder of Octopus I like it Leon what can you share about Daniel give us some dirt yeah so to be honest I haven't checked if you put it on LinkedIn but <laughs> you'll excuse me but anyone that knows Daniel beyond LinkedIn and, and uh, on his Facebook We'll probably know that he's a huge foodie. foodie? He loves foodie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and uh, he also loves to smoke meat, right? So he, he does this. Uh, Daniel, how how do you call it? Is it like a how do you call that um, piece of meat that you, you put in the um, in in, what, in the smoker? The ribs. He got the brisket. <laughs> yeah. So he he makes it's a perfect smoking like beef cheeks uh, recently amazing yeah i used to weigh like like 20 pounds less before <laughs> so it sounds like daniel's not only the ceo but he might be the chief barbecue officer as well is that what i'm yeah. hearing that's not on his linkedin yeah, that's true <laughs> awesome well yeah daniel congratulations on such a milestone everybody you know in octopus is super excited i know the world is watching and we can't wait to see what incredible things you two are going to be up to this year sure thank thanks a lot jen and keep right. up the good work <laughs> <laughs> will do thanks for getting radically transparent with me Thanks for tuning in to the Radically Transparent podcast brought to you by Octopost, the only social media management and employee advocacy platform architected for B2B. I'm Jennifer Gutman, your host and director of social strategy here at Octopost. And if you love today's show, we'd love if you subscribe, rate, and give a raving review wherever you get your podcasts. For more discussion on B2B social media marketing, be sure to follow Octopost on LinkedIn. And of course, to gain access to all our free social media marketing and employee advocacy resources, head on over to our website, www.octopost.com. Until next time.